But today, let's check out the latest addition to the Steel AK series uh, of product, battery products. So you may have currently the BGA 57, nice little handheld battery power blower, or possibly the FSA 57, your little string trimmer here. And we have a chainsaw that we can get, as well as a hedge trimmer, a lawnmower, and an extended reach hedge trimmer. Today, I want to check out the latest, the newest, the Steel FSA 60 string trimmer. So we're going to unbox this today, the Steel FSA 60 string trimmer. This is uh, a step up from the FSA 57. We'll go over some of the cool new features that this has. Uh, let's take a look at it. So let's start out by opening this up. I am yet to open one up. It's got this nice fancy packaging that tells me about it. It's a steel. It's got a three-year warranty. Talks about some of the specs on it. Uh, it's got a 13.8 inch cutting swap. That's larger than their uh, FSA 57. It'll run 25 minutes on the AK20 battery. And if you want, we can get a bigger battery, right? We can run the AK30. That's going to add about two amp hours to the, uh, to the power reserve. Comes in at 9.8 pounds. It is made in Austria. Cool. All right, let's break this open. In the package, let's start out with the battery. Let's find out about the battery here. This AK20 comes in at four amp hours. We have the optional AK30 that you can pick up if you want a spare battery, and this is coming in at 4.8 amp hours. So a little bit more runtime, probably 25 minutes versus 30, 35 runtime on that. We also have our owner's manual. Always a good thing to read the owner's manual. Get an idea of what you got going on with it. Our bag of goodies. Safety glasses. Protective eyes. A barrier bar. I'll talk about what that does in a minute. A loop handle. And let's go ahead and lose some tools there. We've got some screws. We've got a little torch wrench here and clamps for the handlebar, as well as instructions on how to rewind the trimmer head, which we'll go over that here in just a minute. By the way, this trimmer head can run or does run an 095 trimmer line, so that's a big step up. Normally we're used to seeing 080 or even 060 on some of these things. So this deflector is going to slide on like so, kind of fits right around the housing here and then there's two screw holes so I'm going to put in those screws in it and looks like they're using the standard steel T27. What else do we know about this machine? So we've got this uh, AutoCut C6-2 trimmer head which runs 0.095 trimmer line. It is a rapid load system meaning I just wind this knob here to reload it. We can go over that. Uh, we have the opportunity to put on, or the option to put on, a DuroCut 5-2. That's a steel's line head that uh, allows you to run strips of trimmer line and actually run a little bit larger diameter trimmer line. I'm working right here on the handle. You know, I get once in a while people asking, what is this for? There's some vibration standards in place around the world that are very important that steel has to meet and adhere to. And if the handle is closer than this little plastic piece here, you'd have a higher level of vibration right here, sorry, right here, than is acceptable. So that's the purpose of it. It took a few years to figure that out. Just, just an FYI, if you don't like it on there, you can take it off. I always leave it on. I think it's a nice thing actually to grab and carry it with. Let's get this handle on here. And we'll go back. I see my missing screw. That's cool. So we can run the DuroCut 5-2 uh, strip feed head. We use that terminology. 
We can also run the Polycut 6-2, which is their uh, plastic bladed head. So if I'm getting into some heavier stuff, you can run the Polycut. Tighten these up real quick. So we know what heads we can run. What about the motor? What about this uh, power output? I want to say that I read it has like 25% more power than the FSA 57. I should have probably memorized that. I shoot these videos from the hip, so sometimes those specs elude me. Uh, and I apologize. Let's get this last screw in here so it doesn't fall apart on me when I fire it up. Pretty simple, so I'm putting in four screws to make this go. Based on this shaft diameter, we would have the opportunity to put on a shoulder strap if desired. It does not look like it comes with a, a hook, but we can add that. And then let's get on this bumper. May or, not, may or may not be familiar with this. This goes, let's see if I can hold this with my knee, right here. And the purpose of it is when I'm trimming, right? I'm not gonna take my fence out or my tree out. I could also use it as an edging guide. And then it flips up out of the way if I don't wanna use it. So that's the, the purpose of that piece right there. Let me grab my battery. My AK-20 is gonna fit in here the other way, like so. Looks like just like all of the steel AK series, I've got a park position and a run position. Meaning when I stick it in the first click, I got no power. The second one, now I'm connected and ready to go. This battery has one bar, so it's not, not a lot of runtime right now on it. Here's the cool thing, guys. Here's what I'm excited about. The AK series has always been an on and an off. Meaning when I pull the trigger, it's going 100. Or, and when I let go, it's going zero. There's no variation. With this guy, it is a variable throttle, so I hear. So we got low, up, and you're accelerating. Now what does that mean? Who cares? They got variable throttle. What, what does that matter? What it matters is runtime, right? There's places around my property where I don't need full power. So if I'm running it, quarter throttle to do the cutting that I need, I'm gonna get longer battery runtime. Or, when I wanna prissy foot around, when I've got some stuff that I don't wanna attack on, I mean, I'm going along a fence and I don't wanna hit it full trigger, we can easily drop down the power. So really cool, I'm excited about having this variable throttle AK machine. So check it out, the Steel FSA 60, brand new. We've got a few things, we gotta finish tightening up that handle. Let's real quick, guys, let's take a look at this uh, trimmer head and how this works. This is gonna spin off. I can pull this all the way out. Let's get rid of the trimmer line here that's in here. Let's say it looks like, uh, I wanna say it holds about 12 feet, but maybe I'm wrong. One, and I would say 10 feet. Okay, generally never a good idea to reload what was in there, but let's do that. So let's put on the base. So traditionally, we're not gonna have to take this apart. The reason I took it apart is so that we could get it emptied out. Let's put this on. This will push in and tighten the wing knob here, or the knob. I think I got it. Yes. Okay. Now the trick is going to be to line up that little triangle, that little arrow with that dot right there. See it? See it coming out? We're going to pull it like so and then just kind of pull them in to make it match. A little different with this 0.095 trimmer line, but it fits. I like it. And to load it, I simply 
twist this gray section. Hear that clicking? What it's doing is winding in, sucking in. It's usually not a good idea to reuse what was in there. That's what I had in hand. It works. A couple more clicks, and we're good. Just like that. It's a bump feed head. When I tap it, it's going to feed out. Let's take this head off, and let's look at how the Duro cut fits on. Again, we're going to spin this loose. When that's loose, I'll be able to pull the whole true head off. And here's our Duro cut 5-2. Crank this open here a minute. So before I put it on, let's show you how this head works. Strips of trimmer line, like so. And it just slides in. And it's a ratchet in there. It's a one-way ratchet. And you cannot pull it out. When it wears out, I grab it from the inside, pop it off, just like that. Okay, so to put this on, I need this metal plate. And that's gonna go on like so. And then I'm just gonna spin it on. And it's standard thread. And tighten it up. See one thing, I'm gonna have to shorten my trimmer line a little bit or I'm gonna beat the snot out of the guard. So the line I cut is probably gonna be shorter than the standard, I wanna say it's normally 7.9 inches. But just like that, the Duro cut head is on. You can do the same with the poly cut. Hey, so get by your local steel dealer, Carl's Mower and Saw, and check out the new, the latest, the greatest, the steel FSA 60. Maybe you have some of the steel products, maybe you got the BGA 57, or the MSA 140. What a compliment to add to your arsenal of steel products at Carl's Mower and Saw, where we service what we sell, and we're here to match you up with the right products for your property.